In this video, I want to show you how to install an ignition controlled 12 volt socket with the ability to be switched to always be on, as well as how you could adapt a socket extension to also be ignition controlled with a switched ability, whether your vehicle has always on sockets or ignition controlled sockets. In this tutorial, I'm using a 12 volt socket, a 12 volt switch, a 12 volt auto relay, some electrical wire, as well as some general electronic tools like pliers, tape, and a multimeter. Before I begin wiring things up, I just wanted to go over the different circuit options on paper, as well as explain how the relay works. So the way these relays work is typically with the circuit printed directly on it. You can see right here that the relay takes a signal. This is a very low amperage signal, and this is what basically turns the relay on or off. So whenever there is a voltage across this circuit right here, this flips this switch so also the way this is drawn is how this relay is wired when there's no voltage across it so this 30 is always closed to 87a when there's no voltage across this circuit once there is voltage across this circuit this will switch right here and then 30 will be connected to 87 and as soon as you remove the voltage across 86 to 85 it'll It'll switch back to its steady state again and short 30 to 87a so as far as the different circuit options i'm going to go over how to wire in a standalone one first so here's my 12 volt socket right here like this one end is connected to 12 volts you could run that all the way to the battery or you could use an existing fuse circuit that's always on this is the relay right here so at the other end of the socket it needs to connect to one end of the non-signal terminals right here the other end will connect the ground to complete the circuit. So in this case, if you look at here, it'll be connected to 30 and the other end will be connected to 87 right here, since that's the one that you wanna be switching on. For the signal to switch the relay, I'm gonna tie into an existing ignition circuit. That way when I turn the key on, it'll send the signal and power the relay and then give power to the socket. So for this to work, I'm gonna tie into the fuse box since I want it to be fused. I just need to find a fuse circuit on here that is already ignition controlled. So here's the existing circuit. So you have 12 volt going through the fuse and then the other end is grounded. So you need to tie in after the fuse to make sure that you're still using a fuse setup. That way, if your relay for some reason shorts or something, it'll blow the fuse and protect the circuit. So that's connected to one end of the relay of the signal. So say 86 here. For the 85, the other end, you would just connect straight to ground. So it would go right here, through the relay, and then straight to ground. So next I'm going to go over if your existing vehicle sockets are always on, meaning they're always connected to the battery, whether ignition is on or off. So here's the existing socket right here, 12 volts, going through and being grounded. So what you would do is cut it right here and tie one end connected to a wire and the other end connected to a wire, and those will go across the power circuit of the relay. That way the current will go from your 12 volt through your male part, through the wire, through the relay, and then back through to the female part to complete the circuit going all the way around. For the signal part of the relay, you would do the same as the other part where you would just take a fuse location that's ignition controlled and connect to it after the fuse. And then of course you would grab the other end. That way, even though the circuit is always giving power, this is not always powered. This is only powered when the ignition is on. So normally this is an open circuit. And then once this gets a signal from the ignition fuse, this would close the relay and then you'd be able to flow power all the way through. And lastly, and the easiest, if your vehicle already has 12 volt ignition controlled sockets and you want to be able to turn them always on, say if you want to leave your dash cam on while you go into the parking lot, all you need to do is get the extension and tie into it. You don't even need to cut it. You could use a tie-in connection, put the switch right here and put that to 12 volts. That way the 12 volts will go right here, through here, through the circuit and then be grounded still. So normally the, so normally you would have this off and you would turn the car on and of course it would power the circuit all the way through. But as soon as you turn the key off, it'll, this will cut power to the circuit. But if you wanted it to stay on, you would just flip the switch, then it'll bypass right here and get the current going through from the battery or the existing circuit right here and still have power with the key off. With that done, the first step is to find which fuses will be ignition controlled and which ones to connect straight to 12 volt if you're not going to connect straight all the way to the battery. Typically this is in the manual. So you just open it up and then you just look at which one of these is ignition controlled or always connected to 12 volts. In my case, for the ignition controlled fuse, I've chosen something that is not essential. If it does become disconnected, it won't create a safety hazard. And also you need to test this by putting the multimeter across it and make sure there's zero volts with the ignition off and then turn it on and make sure it reads 12 volts. 
For my 12 volt supply, I'm taking it straight from the horn since it's also a 20 amp fuse since I want to be able to draw plenty of power coming from the 12 volt socket. So the next step, I'm going to strip some wire and connect into my 12 volt supply that's always on. So to do this, I'm going to strip it and set aside a little bit of wire like this, just separate it. And then I'm going to remove the fuse that I've chosen. In this case, this 20 amp right here, this is the horn. So you'll first need to identify which side is the 12 volt supply because you want to go after that. Otherwise, you won't be using the fuse connection. So I have my multimeter right here and I'm going to hit it. Kind of difficult to fit it in there. So there's my 12 volts. I just saw it. There we go. So since it's positive, I know that this side is a 12 volt supply or the side over there. So I need to tie in to after that side on this side of the fuse. So to do that, I'm going to stick this into the side right here make sure it goes all the way in and then just get the fuse and push it in afterward and it'll compress the wires in between it and the housing i'm actually going to cut away the excess wire that i folded just because it's starting to get in the way this also reduces the chance of you accidentally shorting it out that wire i just connected i'm going to connect to the positive end of the socket this will be the red wire the other one is black so make sure you connect it to the correct one so the other end, you will need to connect to the relay right here. Here's the socket. I have the positive 12 volts going in this side. And then this will go to the relay right here. And then the other end will span across here and need to connect to ground. Luckily though, I already have a wire for something else. So I'm just going to splice in right here. This is connected directly to the ground on the battery. At this point, I'm taking my 12 volts from the fuse location down there, running into the positive side of my socket right here. The other side, I'm connecting to the powered part of the relay. In this case, this is 30 or 87. It doesn't matter which one, since all it does is close the circuit. And on the opposite side of here, I'm going to run this to ground. I have my ground down there. So that completes the powered part of the circuit right here. Now I need to connect to the signal part, which is ignition controlled. This, I'm first going to connect to my fuse location down here again. That's the ignition control. This is the exact same as connecting to the powered part of the circuit. So once you've tied into the fuse, you'll connect it to the 86 or the 85. And then to the other end, you'll connect the ground. Once you've connected everything, you could test the circuit by turning on the ignition. And you should hear a small click from the inside. You might have to listen very closely though to hear it because it's small. First, to really test it, you'll connect a powered component. So right here, I have it fully connected and it's... The radar detector right there, it's off right now. So when I turn the key on, it should turn on when the signal reaches the relay and it allows power to flow through it. And I should see that turn on. And perfect. So now this is definitely ignition controlled. With everything wired up, the last thing to do if you want a switch connection is to put a switch in line. That way you bypass the relay and then you can connect straight to power. So to do this, you could mount the switch in a hidden location in case you need the ability to turn the power on without it being noticed. In my case, I'm going to put it down here out of the way, and then you won't be able to see it. So I've drilled a small hole right here, and I'm going to connect one in from the grounded side. I've exposed this wire right here. This is the grounded side of the socket. I'm going to connect to one end of the switch, and then of course the other end, I'm going to connect to ground as well. Once the switch has been secured and wired up, you can test it by plugging in the accessories. So remember, this is ignition controlled right now, so that's why these are off. But you can force it on like this, and you should turn on. So it looks like everything's good. And you could also test the ignition feature by putting in the key and turning it on. And everything is turning on correctly. So in this video, I showed how to install a standalone socket that could be both ignition controlled as well as fully connected to the battery. Thanks for watching.